This game is amazing. Dragon Age The Veil Guard is truly a game of choice. Yes, Dragon Age. A fantasy role-playing game of astonishing spec- spec- What the fuck does that even- <coughs> Is the Dragon Age series dead? How can a game that looks this good be this bad? Deceit is what it is. First, let me kick the elephant out of the room. The number one topic discussed for this game is the woke factor. Whatever your feelings may be regarding this, I just want you to know prior to watching this video that I don't care. What I mean is, companies have the right to include whatever they want or don't want in their products, much like how we as consumers, as customers, have the right to buy or not to buy the products based on the things that we like and dislike. Honestly, what I'm trying to boil it down to is, if you don't play this game or if you do play this game based on its woke factor, it doesn't actually make a difference to me. I'm not your mom. I just don't want it to be the topic of discussion because everybody else on the fucking internet has already talked about this, has already covered it. It's been done, it's been said. What I want to do is take a step back and talk about the things that I believe are make it or break it when it comes to video games. That includes things like gameplay mechanics, performance, graphics, and genre elements. I want to take a look at Velgard and tear it apart to see if this is truly the death of one of the most beloved series of all time. Dragon Age Veilguard is described as an action RPG. And just like that, we got to the root of the problem. This game tries to do a lot with the action portion of it. It also tries to do a lot with the RPG portion of it. And unfortunately, it falls short with both kind of leaving it grasping at straws, making it very boring and honestly bland, uninspired. I mean, there's a lot of words that I can use here. It lacks personality. While it does have aspects that are great, those are definitely overshadowed by hours of bog. From the outside in, you look at this game and it's like, wow, it looks amazing. The cinematics, the graphics, the animations, they're visually stunning. But you scratch the surface just a little bit and you get to shit. The Dragon Age series as a whole was established and beloved for its lore, its rich storytelling, immersive world building, and complex moral choices that allow players to shape their own narratives. In other words, they're known for being fantastic RPGs. You could go so far as to say that the Dragon Age series is a standout in the RPG genre. Having never played any of the older games myself, even I knew growing up that these games were fucking iconic. I wasn't allowed to play it when I was young. I wasn't 17. It was rated M for Mature. Those are strict parents for you. Now that I mentioned that, I know that a lot of people are gonna bombard the comments with their bitch forks. Don't forget your torches and your, uh, the little fuel, the, what is it called? The lighter fluid, in case you run out of that, you know, because you're gonna need it. I actually think that Veilguard being my introduction to the series gives me a unique perspective, an unbiased opinion on this game that isn't clouded by the nostalgia glasses that I know some of you guys have on right now. So hear me out before you bitch and then bitch, but first hear me out. The writing throughout the entire game was bland, from the character dialogue to the way that the story pans out. The best way that I can describe this is that it's cookie cutter. There's a grand issue this party's trying to navigate around. The solutions always seem to be, we need this item or we need to talk to this person. And that sums up the game. You cannot disqualify the fact that there are times where the story gets interesting, where you you see something unfold that doesn't feel like another task, and in those moments, we see a light shine through with stories that develop the characters, the factions, and their background stories. But those moments are so few and far between. Bro, compare this to another heavy-hitting RPG, and it just does not even come close to hitting the mark. To be considered an RPG doesn't really take much. Add a couple of choices here and there, write a random story that takes you from point A to point B, throw in a skill tree, and you have yourself an RPG. But to be considered a top-notch RPG, the hullabaloogie that everybody is talking about, you have to do something special. It has to invest you in as a player, make you feel like you're truly living out these moments within the story that you had a hand in creating yourself. The choices need to feel like they truly do matter. And in this game, they just don't. They don't feel impactful. The dialogue choices are generic. And even when there's a choice that's supposed to make a big impact on the game, the little highway choices, I like to call them. I never got that like big hint of anxiety that you're supposed to get when you're about to make a choice and you save and then you're ready to reload in case you made the wrong choice. I never got that. Nev, that coffee in the kitchen, you made it? Keen eye. Did you boil it? If so, why? I'm not picky. I got a cup and it does the job. That's all I ask. I don't know where to go with this. 
I never felt like I was missing out by not knowing what would happen if I chose another path because it didn't make me care. Unlike playing through Baldur's Gate 3 where every single time I was even remotely close to having a conversation, I was hitting that F5 button in case I needed to reload, in case I needed to rethink my life choices within that game. Whereas in Veilguard, you can't make the wrong choice. There's no freedom in that. There are no stakes. I tried so hard to be the bad guy. I swear to you, I was trying to piss everybody off. I was trying to be the worst human being possible, or I think I was an elf, the worst elf possible, the worst elf alive, but it just wasn't allowing me to get to that point. There was no morality scale there that allowed me to really piss off some people so that they truly did hate me. If I made somebody angry for A or B reason, they immediately forgave me and that was that. It was so frustrating. I was just trying to live out my best evil life. Now, there is a mechanic technically for Angie characters, okay, for Angie companions. They turn into these hardened moods, so while well, they're in your party, you can no longer perform support abilities with them, only attack abilities. And they do slightly more damage with those attacks as well. It's so minuscule, who cares? And also you do more attack damage because I pissed you off than I probably did the right thing in that situation. A good indicator that the choices were mid is the fact that there are three endings, a good, a neutral, and a bad, and all three lead to the same result. Yes, different things technically happen, but they lead to the same result. And I can't really explain it more than that unless I spoil the entire thing, so I'm gonna avoid it. But if you know, you know. The companions are overall okay. The main ones you meet have potential to be really neat, but like I mentioned before, the writing is so bland that I was left wanting for more. Moments where the companions' background stories are mentioned and referenced peak through as the story progresses, which only makes me question how good this game could have been if the devs took the time to flesh out those stories in a meaningful way. A plus that I will give Veilguard, the dialogue is unique between different members of the party. I thought it was a nice cherry on top of the mound of shit to pay attention to that detail. <laughs> also, plot armor is so overdone, it's cringe. It's almost as bad as the little powwows that you have with your parties where everybody starts bickering, like if they were middle school exes sitting at the same lunch table. It was honestly, I don't know, maybe that's a personal preference thing, but I just felt like all the characters were so childlike and so petty. I, it was really annoying to get through some of those portions of the story. Again, I think that part of it was more personal preference. I have a lot of hate towards annoying people, but we'll move on from that. So, okay, is that a great RPG? That's honestly not the worst thing that could happen. There's a lot of games with stories that are kind of shit, but are still fun as hell because the gameplay picks up the slack. Not this game. The action adventure portion of this game is just as bland as the RPG portion of this game. Don't get me wrong, the combat and overall gameplay is not bad. It just falls short of being great. Just okay, combat doesn't justify spending hours and hours playing through and beating the game at full price, in my opinion. It gets really repetitive and the puzzles don't offer for any stimulation to ye old brain cells. They're basically line of sight simulator. Find a crystal that unlocks the next crystal that unlocks the next crystal that unlocks the door. Find the pimple to pop that unlocks the door. Find the wisp that unlocks the door. Like, I keep falling right back to the same word to describe this game, which I guess is perfect because I get to be as repetitive as this game was, but it's fucking bland. What makes up for these moments is the fact that the world design is actually really beautiful. I don't think you can look at this game and say that the graphics are bad or that the world isn't pretty. As far as combat goes, you have a skill tree, abilities to unlock for yourself, and the abilities to unlock for the companions, which you choose in real time. You get a ton of loot, but most of it is trash loot. It's, it's okay. Okay, you can upgrade weapons and armor. I mean, it's basic, but it works. It, like I mentioned, is real-time fighting with the choices of comboing certain abilities with others to make them more powerful. Let me talk about this specific mechanic for a little bit here because this one was super exciting to me when I read it, when I read what it could do, and then it fell off so hard. Comboing with one of my companions sounds so sick. It really sets it up to add like intricacy and variety to the gameplay. The problem is that they dumb it down so much that it leaves nothing for you to try and figure out for yourself. As soon as you open the ability menu, it legit just highlights the abilities that can combo, and every single time you use it, it has the exact same animation that it executes. A big explosion. That took the variety right out of the equation. <laughs> 
made it brainless, mindless, button mashy, much like the rest of the combat. Repeated animations were a huge downside for me in particular, for both my character and the enemy characters. While I didn't expect it to have thousands of different animations for different attacks, I counted two finishing moves the entire game. Two, there are 75 bosses, thousands of ads. I've played the game for like 45 hours and I've counted two animations for the finisher move. <sighs> Maybe different classes had more or less, but you will not catch me booting this game up again just to try and see if I miss something like that. Out of the 75 bosses, I would say one out of like six or seven would stand out as a wow factor. The rest were repeated variations of the same thing. Enemy variety was a big issue for me as well. Honestly had me asking myself, why is it that the lack of enemy variety is so apparent in this game? When I've played games like Batman Arkham Asylum and loved that game and that game didn't have like a crazy amount of enemy variety either. It only had like four enemy types and I don't even think I noticed that playing through the game. Why is it that it's a problem here but it wasn't a problem there? I think what it comes down to is level design and the approach to the fights. Fighting certain enemies felt really repetitive in Veilguard because the level design, not the aesthetics but the actual arenas, was poorly executed and very very predictable. It never changed. It was always fight in this open area. Yeah, the area looks sick, but that was it. Compare that to the Batman games where different scenarios, placements, and fights felt like puzzles on their own. Maneuvering through the areas using stealth or balls blazing fisty cuffs of death, it never felt boring or repetitive. Look at another game, The Witcher 3, a game who I would even go so far as to argue doesn't have the best of combat, but it still adds variety in having to figure out what the enemy was, finding different and specific ways to hunt each one of them, using various items to buff yourself and your equipment based on the scenario that presented itself. We put a lot of effort into seamlessly blending gameplay with the surrounding environment. Monster behavior and tactics change depending on the time of day or terrain. It's these shifting circumstances that will often determine if you are hunter or prey. Clear an area of monsters and you'll witness people settling in transforming dangerous areas into sprawling hubs where you can buy and sell gear. Veilguard is as simple as here's an open space, here's some enemies that are shooting at you, and here's some enemies that are running around. Good luck. There is a parry and a dodge. But the responsiveness of the parry also was a problem for me. Sorry. Whew. The attacks don't actually match the indicator's timing in Veilguard. There are three indicators total, one in white telling you that you are being targeted, the other is yellow meaning you need to parry, and the last is red meaning it's non-parryable so you need to dodge. They're simple enough, but the problem with these that made them feel loose and unresponsive was that they had different time windows depending on the attack and depending on the enemy. So sometimes the indicator would pop up and you need to hit it right away or else you were gonna miss it, or sometimes the indicator would pop up and I would hit the parry, but the actual timing was several seconds later so I would just look like a wet noodle holding up my little block and then putting it back down just to get pelted in the face. Maybe it's a skill issue. Maybe it's not. I play a lot of these types of games, okay? In that case, I would rather the game didn't even give me an indicator. I would rather look at the enemy and react to it, swing or hit or whatever, just like you would in a Dark Souls game. Good examples of solid use of the indicator mechanics are games like the God of War series, both old and new, Batman Arkham games, and Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. If you've played those games, you should have a good idea of what I'm talking about. The indicator pops up and you hit it right away, executing the parry or the dodge perfectly. There really is is no intuitive or awe-inspiring designs for neither the puzzles or the combat. Aside from a few exceptions here and there, but again, I'm repeating myself. There's so few and far between, it's hard to make an argument for those moments than just to make an argument for the moments that are lacking. The gameplay is good enough to be considered an action RPG, but not good enough to be considered a great one. Had this game been a shorter game, maybe a bite-sized version of this that trimmed the fat of the useless side quests and just gave straightforward linear experience of say, I don't know, around 10 hours and made it $20 cheaper. I would actually have a very positive outlook on it. The issue 
is the hours of filler that don't respect the player's time, the facade of choices throughout the story that don't actually matter, and the repetitive nature of the combat that made it feel like a very thinly spread pancake that was just made long as hell for no reason. So to me, yes, the series is dead. It went from being a fan favorite, a standout series in the genre, to a watered down diet version of itself with this game. There is an argument to be had saying that they still have potential to make other games in the future that kind of clean up these messes. The only reason I highly doubt that will actually happen is because I'm seeing all these inflated the Lulu reviews calling this game the best thing since sliced bread. I hate saying that because there's two sides to this coin. I don't necessarily want to be a hater. If you as a consumer, as a customer, as a person, as a regular person really loved every second of this game with every fiber of your being, then I'm actually happy for you because you got your money's worth out of a game, out of a product that you bought and there's no better feeling than that. But but those are not the reviews that I'm necessarily talking about. I see these massive gaming websites and news companies giving the game 9 out of 10 and 10 out of 10, making me question if they even played the fucking game. After 10 years and hundreds of millions of dollars in development, Dragon Age The Veilguard recently launched to catastrophic failure. Why is the reaction to this video game so strong? Electronic Arts set a false expectation for this product by manipulating reviews and employing mainstream media and video game game journalists to positively review the game while excluding any individual or outlet who seemed as if they would judge the game based on its actual qualities or lack thereof. So Bioware, or wait, who makes this? So Bioware and EA see these successful game reviews. They see the sales coming in. There's nothing really stopping them from continuing down this path of making mediocre games that muddle up their beloved IPs. But I don't know, that's just my personal take. That's my personal perspective. Of course, I'd like to hear from you guys. Do you guys think that the game's dead? That the series, I should say, is dead? Or do you guys think that it has potential to be better in the future? Did you guys like this game and I'm just talking shit for no reason? Let me know down in the comments below. No reason? I'm going through puberty apparently like scoop all right i'm done with my rant don't forget to leave your like for the algorithm gods and i'll see you guys in the next one bye